Yesterday, I said I rarely call for someone to lose their job, whether it's someone like Shannon Sharp, hey, it's me, Shay Shay, or even the insufferable, intolerable Katie Rue Collins, who somehow was given a prime time slot at CNN with minimal qualifications. I'll even take it a step further. The wicked wig of the woke, Joy Reid. Joy Reid's wrong 99 times out of 100. She promotes myths and fantasies to a group of lonely men over the age of 65 who enjoy spanking the wanker to her constantly changing hair color. I might think Joy Reid is the epitome of evil, the wife of Lucifer, but I don't think she should lose her job. For some reason, over a million people tune into MSNBC every night, watching with anticipation, waiting to see which wig boy Joy will be modeling tonight. I can only think of a handful of time over the last three or four years where I have actually pushed for someone to be fired. One of those times just happened to be yesterday with Bud Light CEO Brendan Whitworth, the man who is leading Bud Light in their battle against both CNN and Bamani Jones for the crown of huge embarrassing failure. Today, though, we're going to add another name to that list because if I were the owner of the Washington Mystics, Natasha Cloud, she would be fired today. Over the weekend, I shared with you guys a tweet from Natasha Cloud where she called America trash. That was bad enough. Calling the country trash that has given you the opportunity to live a life of privilege, the country that's given you the opportunity to attend private school, receive a college education from woke you in the field of waste management, and then upon graduating from college, you reach the top of your field, making almost $200,000 a year to dump garbage into the back of a truck. Tell me another country in the world where a trash collector is making six figures. Go ahead. I'll wait. It was one thing for Natasha Cloud to call America trash right before the 4th of July. Kind of getting a bit of deja vu here. If I remember correctly, Howard Bryant wrote a column for ESPN last year around the same time explaining why America sucks. I guess this year, Deacons at Woke United Methodist selected Natasha Cloud to deliver the message. But it was one thing for Natasha Cloud to call America trash. If you're the owner of the Washington Woke, if you're the diva of dump divas Kathy Engelbert, you could consider that a singular incident. It could be a, a one-off. It's just an emotional dump diver exhausted after a long day of processing garbage in the middle of a heat wave, taking out her emotional outrage on her country. As her employer, as the person responsible for paying her minimum wage, maybe you demand that Tasha the Bongo Washa issue an apology and just move on. But there was no apology given by the bongo washer over the weekend. No, 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 no. Apologize? Seriously? Why would Natasha Cloud apologize when she is a dual victim? According to Natasha Cloud, she is a victim of both mythical racism and lesbianophobia. KC, what is lesbianophobia? It's this weird belief amongst women with beards that men are afraid of them because they have facial hair. I've always struggled to understand the myth of lesbianophobia. When I was growing up, dudes loved lesbians. Hell, Howard Stern laid the foundation of his career by celebrating lesbians. Last Friday, Natasha Cloud got on Twitter to express her fake outrage over the fact that the Supreme Court basically ruled that affirmative action was illegal. Now, in the midst of this emotional fake outrage, Tasha explained to the bearded beauties that follow her that the country that gives them the freedom to dress like dudes is trash. As expected, the response from normal people to Natasha Cloud was overwhelmingly negative. There are a lot of things that Americans will tolerate. Calling the country trash, that ain't one of them. Instead of Natasha Cloud looking at this response from a business perspective, she once again allowed her emotions to take over. Saturday morning, as I was preparing my video on her calling America trash, Tasha the Bongo Washa unleashed another emotional tirade on Twitter. What I'm about to show you, these are the thoughts of a grade A shitfuck. Check it out for yourself. Look at the very first sentence. I have been blessed to travel the world throughout my career as a garbage man. Um, what country gave you that blessing? What country gave you the opportunity to travel the world? 
The Bongo washer claims that when she travels to these other countries, she doesn't have to deal with white supremacy. They also give her free health care, free education. When traveling to these other countries, she's also paid minimum wage. You know, I would imagine Natasha Cloud doesn't have to deal with white supremacy when she travels to Ethiopia. Last I checked, very, very few white people living in Ethiopia. Now, this is where Natasha Cloud is most comfortable. Ethiopia is a third world country. The amenities offered in the WNBA dump resemble a third world country. I thought it was ironic that she mentioned free education because that is exactly what she received here in America. Up next, with the accusations rooted in hypocrisy, Natasha Cloud accused you of killing baby Jesus. As you can see, this tweet was obviously written by someone who received their education from Woke U. At 31 years old, Natasha Cloud still writes with the mental capacity of a teenager. Take a good, hard look at how y'all be living your life filled with constant hate and judgment. Um, I thought Natasha Cloud was allergic to anything hard. I find it ironic that she goes on a judgment-filled, hateful tirade and has the audacity to accuse you of being hateful and judgmental. Clearly, Natasha Cloud never read the Bible. I'm sure she's familiar with the woke Bible, but she's obviously never read the real word of God. Because the evil white man, the evil white man did not kill Jesus. I'm pretty sure that crucifixion was handled by the Romans at the request of the Jews. But the accusations continued. Now at this point, Natasha Cloud was running out of material. She's already accused you of hypocrisy. She's already accused you of bigotry. She claimed you're filled with hate because you couldn't give a fuck less about dump divers. She was running out of accusations at this point, so she puts down the shaving cream along with her Mach 3. She picked up her Magic Woke 8-Ball. She gave the 8-Ball a good shake, waiting with anticipation to see what it landed on. What was the result? One of the go-to accusations when a shitfuck is expressing their fake outrage and failing to make any legitimate points. Check it out for yourself. According to Natasha Cloud, if you are unwilling to admit that you aspire to be a black person living in America, you're a racist. If you're unwilling to recognize the disparities between the LGBT and people who fornicate the old-fashioned way, you're homophobic. Huh. As a matter of fact, I happen to recognize the disparities. Last month, who was marching in the streets of New York City threatening to go after the minds of children? Was that straight Sam? Was that Harriet Housewife? Was that Catholic Carl? Hell, if Catholic Carl said some shit like that publicly, his ass would be in jail. But when the identifiers say it, they are simply fighting for rights that they already have. So yes, there is a disparity here. The identifiers can do and say whatever the hell they want while we have to live by different standards. And look, look, Natasha Cloud is not the only WNBA dump diver that feels this way about America. This mentality is prevalent throughout the dump. These complainers are professionals at being the victim. There is this sense of entitlement that we owe them something because they can't dunk a basketball. Hell, I can't dunk a basketball either. I have the ability to airball wide open layups. When I try to dribble through my legs, the ball crashes into my lemons the same way it does when Bob Griner tries the same thing. I have never understood this sense of entitlement throughout the WNBA. What is the difference between a dunk diver and a below average basketball player? Like I said, if I were the owner of the Washington Mystics, Natasha Cloud would be released today. And it has nothing to do with what she's saying about America. Natasha Cloud has the right to say whatever she wants. I might not understand her mentality. Seems to me, if you're so miserable living here in America, go live somewhere else. Matter of fact, where was the same sentiment last year? Remember when John Biden sent Vlad Vlad an expert arms dealer in exchange for Brittany Griner? It was extremely embarrassing for our confused leader. He was destroyed by conservative media for trading a Rolls Royce for a woman with three legs. As it turns out, there was absolutely no need to release Victor Boot in exchange for Bob Greiner. John Biden, he could have sent Natasha Cloud. This would have been a win-win. Bob Greiner was complaining about being in Russia. 
Natasha Cloud's begging to leave America. She just doesn't have the funding to escape. Her minimum wage salary in the WNBA, it doesn't give her the luxury of escaping this oppression. Plus, she's been one of the biggest complainers when it comes to private airfare. This would have been perfect. You put Natasha Cloud on the government plane and fly her ass to Russia. You put Bob Griner on the paddle boat and hope she doesn't run into any bad weather on her way sailing back to America. Win, win. But anyway, the reason Natasha Cloud should be fired has nothing to do with her fake outrage against America. It has everything to do with how it could negatively impact the WNBA. Outside of her pushing for transgender involvement in sports, Brittany Griner has said all the right things since returning to America. She has a newfound appreciation for her country. The WNBA, they have been exploiting this newfound appreciation, hoping to appeal to normal people. Whether or not it's working, that's a completely different story, but at least they're trying. Back in 2019, the WNBA released a report that outlined the size and demographics of their television audience. Now, obviously, when it came to size, the result came back as small, minuscule, non-existent. But when it comes to racial demographics, it gets kind of interesting. 70 to 80% of dump divers are black. Of the dozens of people watching them on television, half of them are white. Half the WNBA audience consists of white people. You know the one thing that pisses off white people? Being accused of mythical racism. Go ask Adam Silver how that worked for the NBA. The WNBA cannot afford this. Natasha Cloud's emotional tirade is it has been picked up by most conservative media outlets. Now, of course, the woke media is ignoring it. They know it could have a detrimental impact on a league that's already struggling to survive. But if you're Kathy Engelbert, you cannot have this. You can't have one of your players shitting on half your audience. Obviously, Natasha Cloud will not be fired. Hell, I doubt she's even suspended. The WNBA, they'll probably give her a raise, bumping her from $9 an hour to $9.50 an hour. But when you're running a league that struggles to be noticed, this ain't the way to get noticed. This is just not a good look for the WNBA. But give me your thoughts. Natasha Cloud goes on another anti-America rant. She accuses you of mythical racism. She claims you're homophobic. She calls you a hypocrite while being hypocritical herself. Should Natasha Cloud lose her woke welfare over this? Do you think this tirade has a detrimental impact on the WNBA? You let me know. Sound off in the comments below. Make sure to like and subscribe. Click the notification bell to receive all notifications from the channel. Best way to contact me is by email at btlkc84 at gmail.com. KC underscore BTL84 on Twitter. I'll see you guys later.